Hello and welcome to a Guild Wars 2 PvP guide. Today we take a look at the secondary objective of the Legacy of the Foe Fire, the Base Lords. In this episode we'll be covering all the NPCs and their mechanics, how and when to push the bosses safely and effectively, along with some other useful tips and tactics. First up, the basics. The Legacy of the Foe Fire contains two bases. One of them is for the blue team and one for the red. Players are able to pass through the gates of their own base simply by walking through a portal, but to pass through the enemy gates you have to destroy it. Once you're through the gate, you move to the furthest corner of their base where five NPCs reside. The first two are soldiers, the second two are casters, and the last is the Lord itself. These NPCs, while not overly damaging, do have a reasonable amount of HP and a number of abilities that make them a challenge for a single player to defeat. Also, keep in mind as well that the NPCs are simply there to slow you down, allowing the enemy team to return and stop you killing the Lord. And why are you doing all this? Well, that when the Lord dies, it awards your team 150 points. Now let's break down each stage of killing a lord. First up is when to do it. This is a tough one and is often where game losing mistakes are made. Whenever you push the boss you are going to be giving up some if not all of your map control and as a result the enemy team will likely cap most if not all of the points. Even if you leave one or two players behind to defend it's going to take you that little bit longer to kill the boss because you don't have them which is going to give the enemy team that little bit longer to take over the control points. And they might also counter push and try to go for your base. Because of this, an early push is a pretty bad idea. The only time it's really worth doing is if you've already got over 350 points and then you're guaranteed a win upon killing that boss. Even then it's a risk and can often be safer just to defend and hold the nodes as there's always the chance they will successfully defend it. However, if you do decide to push the boss, you need to do it fast. One of the most effective ways to do this is using Mesmer portals. This means you don't waste time running your whole team towards their gate. You can move them all in one big burst. This means you've got less time being off the nodes and less time for the enemy to start taking control of them. You can even use the Mesmer to break down the gate first and then you minimise even more time being wasted. Speaking of the gate, you can only damage it with direct damage attacks, conditions won't do a thing. Once through the gate you have to ascend a couple staircases before approaching the boss. The boss is marked on the map by a helmet and it's on a platform which again is reached by a short set of stairs. There are four NPCs in front of him, the first two are your soldiers. The soldiers can be pulled from range without attracting the others, so this is an option if you don't want to push straight onto the platform and risk aggroing. They're essentially warriors and have a number of skills which will cause a CC. They've got a stun, a daze and an immobilize, so whoever has aggro won't be doing a lot. They can also apply bleeds. Defeating the soldiers is often sung where people slip up. Don't waste your CC or burst rotation on them. I know it can be annoying but the enemy team is on their way to stop you and you're going to need to save it for them. Next in line are two casters. These are pretty much very weak elementalists. They're quite hard to pull actually without aggroing the Lord, but don't worry as they don't do a lot. They can cast direct damage lightning skills that don't do much damage and they're also very low on HP and you can quickly dispatch them. Now for the Guild Lord. He's a cross between a Guardian and a Warrior. He has some CC and will apply bleeding, but he also has a very strong heal that will recover most of his HP if he manages to cast it. He's not going to be dishing out massive damage, however by this point the enemy team will likely be descending on you and fighting both them and him can be a challenge. This is why you shouldn't waste your high damage skills and your CC beforehand. The best bet here is generally to try and keep the enemy team CC'd while you burst down the Lord. AoE is also great as it can hurt everyone in the area. The boss does pack a lot of HP and he won't go down too quickly. When you enter combat with him it will notify the enemy team so even if they didn't know where you were they do now. Good burst builds can finish him off fast but you have little left in their arsenal to escape the enemy so this is another reason why you wait till the boss is going to provide you with a guaranteed victory before you push it. If you want to test out your own or your team's damage on the NPCs and the Lord you can find them in the mist and this is a great place to practice bringing them down as fast as possible and learning their animations. I hope you all enjoyed this episode and I'll see you all soon.